welcome to the Color and Life podcast. Or welcome back, whichever matches the experience you had with us. Have with us. <laughs> um, I'm John Michael. I'm Jennifer. Jennifer. And mother, son. Um, we can be found. Uh, www.colorandlifepodcast.com has all of the things. So it has our links to Instagram and to Ravelry and all of that kind of stuff, as well as makers of the month and all the announcements and the podcasts are up there and everything. Yep. So if lots exists, and lots of information, um, information about fiber gen, all of that. We do have a blurb up on the screen that says where a lot of stuff can be found. Um, the main thing is I'm genuine nits, most social media places, including Ravelry. All right. Uh, what is our target date for upload? Oh, sorry. This is episode 44. Episode 44. Yes. Yes. Um, Hopefully before May's out. <laughs> okay. That's the best I can do right now. All right, so that leads us into what's been going on with us. Yeah, um, I've been I've been working in the mines. <laughs> um, it's hard work. You've been, you've been got a little thing right there. You got a little what? something. Got a little something right on your. He's also been growing a little bit. Did I get it? <laughs> Did I get it? <laughs> the answer is no. I didn't get it. No. He's grown a little bit. Of fun. He's seen because he has some time and he can assess how it looks. He's he's experimenting with facial hair. Anyway, I've been working in the mines and uh, I finished my first semester there, so that was cool. Um, Did well. Yes. Did very well. And yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I learned so much. Um, oh my gosh, it's intense. <laughs> you know how like in high school they'll teach you like this thing for a week, and at mines they'll go, all right, so we're gonna teach you how to solve this problem, and then learn that by next class because we're gonna use it to solve another problem. Good luck. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> In every class. In every class. All four of them. So, yeah. Um, it's intense. And, yeah. So, that's what I've been up to. Um, and then we did some gardening. Yes. We've been doing some gardening. I've been doing some woodwork. Woodworking. Yes. I made a thing. Um, and we'll probably put some of this at the end of the... Yep. Some pictures. Some stuff as our trailer. And, yeah. Or not, that's not a trailer. Trailer's at the beginning. Outro. That's not a word. Yes, it is. Look it up. Outro. Okay. Outro. Anyway. It's, it's the, it's the, it's the... It's the thing we're putting at okay. the end. Okay, end card, then. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Except it's not a card. It's going to be like a slideshow of pictures, so... Anyway. It's so we an did, outro. We, we took a grassy slope and that's by the old chicken coop and turned it into this terraced garden that was really cool. Flower beds. Flower Terraced beds. flower beds. It's not a garden because it doesn't grow produce. It's a flower garden. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> it is totally flower a Flower garden is not every a thing. Every person out there is saying flower garden is totally a thing. Well, every person out there was saying outro is totally a thing. So Maybe. there you go. Alrighty. Um, is that all our updates? Um, I've been busy doing lots of paralegal stuff. Yeah, uh, let's see. I... Which is why some other stuff suffers. Anyway, we've got... Yeah. We've been doing some juggling. Yes. So different things become priorities at different times. Yep, I think that's it for updates, though. Is that it for updates? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So, we also have... Um, still a couple of alongs going on. We have the family movie, uh, family movie night along and the rules and all this are on the website. So I'm just going to send you there to do it. It's a year long Cal. We also have the design along that is still going on. And we also have the yarns around the world alongs mm -hmm. that we're participating in. And those can always be found at um, YITW.org. 
and one of them's coming to it in the spring into summer one's going to come to an end. we haven't told them about that yet. But you can find all the information at YATW.org. No, but we haven't told them about YATW yet. That's okay. They can go there or they can watch the rest of the podcast and find out about it. Yeah. So, we're, so we'll talk about YATW for, a little later. For explanation on that. Yeah. What YATW is. It's yarns around the world. There we go. Okay. You were, just, you were using an abbreviation that no one knows. You just so. say, so you mean yarns around the world. Yes. Yarns around the world. YATW. All right. Cool. So we've got, we've got those going on as far as the lungs go. Yep. Um, and then uh, we have, I don't know, this podcast, which. Yes. What? For the first time in forever. <laughs> <laughs> We're podcasting again. <laughs> All righty. What do we have for our viewers? <laughs> that um, is not musical oriented. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm feeling very musical today. You are feeling very <laughs> musical today. Um, we have show and tell, uh, and we have a giveaway, and we have a conversation. Oh, and we have a book review. Yes, we have a book review. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Nope. So I think it's time to go on with the show. On with the show. Oh, we didn't talk about what we're drinking. Oh, well, where's oh, your tea? I'm drinking... Um, white cran, white cranberry, is that the date? White cranberry bark. White cranberry bark. That's the one. That's what I've been drinking. From David's teas. Uh huh, and it's wonderful. And this is a Jenny the Potter mug, that was part of the Kickstarter that she did for her new studio. And so I love it. It's got a purple. I got sheepies and purple yarn. Love it. Um, and I'm drinking water in my in my mind's water bottle. There we go. And that's it. We're not eating anything this time. Nope. All right. So now we're done. Now, 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 now on with the show. Now on with the show. So, we're showing off. Okay, we're showing off. Cool. You so, go first. I need to go first because I need to get this Whoop. off because it's very warm today. <laughs> but I'm wearing this cowl to show you. Um, the Color and Life cowl. It is being written up now. I finished the, I finished the first one and I'm actually into a second one that I'll show in just a second. But this is the cowl. What do you think? Looks good. The Color and Life count. This one is done with... The Color and Life Minis. From Dogstar Knits. Sorry about the crinklies. There we go. So, it's done with this set of minis. And I have about... Half a gram left of each of them. No. Maybe I have two grams. Two grams left of each of these colors. And this was made with all five of the colors. Um... It's a really cool technique, so, and it's tall enough that you can pull it up and wear it over your head too. I'm not going oh, yeah. to do that right now. So speaking of color and life minis. Oh yes, we have something very excited. Ira gets to pay us a visit again. So, we have Ira here. Yeah. And Ira Hi. is wearing a jester hat, made by our lovely and wonderful friend. Ladybug Lily, Lily from L Ladybug Lily. And hold that up close so you can see. It fits her perfectly. It's adorable. It's perfect for Ira, the therapy <laughs> alpaca. Yep. So, so, yeah. There we go. We love this. It's, I it's, think it's fantastic. We're, we're debating about whether there need to be bells. So vote down in the comments whether you think there should be bells on, Ky on Ira's... Um, just her hat. I vote yes. So, anyway, this is just adorable, Lily. We love it. It's just absolutely fantastic. So, Ira now has a hat to help us um, feel better. Yep. I mean, it's just so super fantastic. And in case you Show haven't seen yet, it's made with the Color and Life minis. It's made with the Color and Life minis. 
this just so. makes me happy every time I see it. Thank you very much, Lily. And I am going to take this off. Oh. So it's, it's really tall. It's a nice tall, um, cowl. So you can end up pulling it back up over your head. Anyway, working on the pattern this week. Um, should have it out. I should have it ready for test knitters soon. So, again, if you'd like to be a test knitter, contact me. PM me on Instagram if you want to. I put up a post saying that. Now, the next thing for show and tell, and we're going to kind of skip back and forth between Dun and Beautifuls and UFOs, is a UFO. So I'm doing another version of this Color and Life cowl out of this wonderful rainbow whoops that's not the right one a rainbow mini set a dusky rainbow knitting set from from um knit stitch oh that doesn't work let me see if i can pull the card out yeah the card comes out that is not the light is not working here Anyway, Dusky Rainbow Mini set, set by Knit Stitch, and her website is knitstitchyarn.etsy.com. So, I'm doing six colors with this one to make the rainbow, because it has six colors, but it doesn't matter. So, this is a really nice and fun cowl to do with all of those minis that you're like, what do I want to do? And it's a striping one, but there's a cool technique involved so that you don't have ends. This is the side where I'm joining the, where all the ends are. And um, you're not going to have, you're only going to have your ends at your beginning and your end to weave in. So it's not a big deal. It's nice. So it's knit flat and then seamed. Alrighty. And there'll also be tutorials on Fiber Gen. For this project. Guess I should go now. Um, sure. Or do you want to show your other cowl? Oh yeah, I should probably do that other cowl. So we've got um, the black raspberry cowl, and this didn't you get get to see this finished? You only saw it in progress. So here it is done. I've worn it a couple of times, um, and somehow I snagged it. You know that happens with knitting. So I'm going to end up doing a fiber gen on how to fix snags. Oh. And I'll walk through exactly how to fix this. Um, so that's on the plate for um, a tutorial for FiberGen. That's why I haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> it's because I'm going to turn it into a tutorial on how to fix a snag. Because they happen in any. Wow. Okay. All right. Is it my turn? I think it is. All right. Let me just finish this set of Pearls. Should I do my one other UFO first? Nope. Okay. He's in the middle of a row. I've got this. Oh, look how much Lovely you've done. date on the, the porch. Look. So you left it off here and you've done... I would... I'm going to need to block it pretty well. Yeah. Um, but one so thing that I... So it kind of stays out like this. Yeah, that's pretty... Hold it up closer. There you go. We've got some weird shadows going on today. Sorry yeah, it's it's a little bit dark outside. So, you've you've got this. I was I was noticing that his the way you put your um, stitch marker on your progress keeper on, it's pulling that out. Yeah. So I would put it around more. Or you could just take it out and move it. I would put it around more. Then you get to put a new one in. So I took it out and put it around more of the thing so it wasn't pulling off that one edge. Do you want a stitch marker? I'll just use that keeper? one. I'll move it up. I've got lots. Just move that one up. You could. Alrighty. If you don't want another one. I like my little sand dollar progress keeper. Well, so yeah, I've done about I've done about four inches. There's one here that says believe. Nah. Believe you will get a date on the porch. <laughs> Those are chickens in the background. One of them must be laying. 
because that's the sounds they make when they're laying. They have to announce and make a big deal out of it. Alrighty. Okay, it's not too loud. Okay. Okay. So hopefully the chickens are calmed down in the background a little bit. All right. Oh, I'm next. Oh no. What yarn are you using? Oh yes. So this is, um, mm, I forgot. It's a color full eclectic. It is. Rapture sock. Graphite. It's Rapture sock. So it's got cashmere in it. Ooh, la la. It's a very nice scarf. Um, and it is a scarf. It's going along very slowly. But it's such a beautiful pattern that I don't really care. I, I mean, I, I cannot wait until it's a finished product, but it's really fun to look at every time. So Yeah. It's one of those you're enjoying the process of knitting. You're a product knitter, but you love the process of knitting this one because you get to see it all the time. Well, I really want it to be done, but it's okay that it's taking a while because it's beautiful enough to... To be okay. Yeah. Okay. It's beautiful enough for me to put in that effort. <laughs> cool. Are you going to work on anything else? Are you working on anything else? No. No, I'm You're not. doing lots of woodworking stuff lately. Yes. So I am creating of a different kind. I actually just made a whiteboard yesterday. Should we take some pictures of that and put them in at the end? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We could do that. Okay. So we might do that. Um, and I'm actually... So I've been playing this game called Fez, and it's a puzzle game. And I keep thinking I want to knit, like, a little stuffy of the main character. <laughs> because he's basically just this little white blob with this red fez on top. And he's adorable. That would be so cute. And I need to make him. So, I may, I may... You've knit a fez try before. And, well, I have knit a fez before. On Doctor You. Yes. But this, this will be a different sort of fez. Cool. Did Doctor You ever get up on your project page so people could see yes. it? Yes. Awesome. Alrighty, time okay, for the... So, so that may be a project that I start at some point, and it'll be, just be a little stuffy, like this big. So, cool. Alrighty. Oh, and his name well, is Gomez. I started, I started doing some crocheting. Maybe I'll show that next time. Okay. For the... that I saw... Yeah, we'll do that next time. Alright. My next project is in my... Um... Oh, her name is popping out of my head right now. Erin Lane. <clears throat> this is my Erin Lane bag, and it's a Doctor Who sheeple bag. I love it. It's uh, it's the sheep it police box. Yeah. So what's in here is big moose parts. Ah, oh, moose parts. All of my moose parts are done. Is it pretty messy in there? It's pretty messy in here. Because I have all of these... Moose parts. Moose parts. Ooh, is that the moose so this face? Is the, this is the face. And this is his chin. Moose chin. And this is... These are the antlers. Ah! It's a mooseler. Yeah, they're all curly right now. I'm going to have to go get some wire to go in them. So I still need to seam everything up. And stuff it. And stuff it and get some forms for the frame. I got ears in here too somewhere. Because it's a stuffed moose head. That's right. And I've got ears in here too. There's an ear. Ah, oh, it's a moose ear. There's a moose ear. Who made this so, pattern? This is from Faux Knits. Ah, oh, that's right. Um, te Faux Taxidermy Knits. There is a project on my project page for that. I cannot... Oh, wait. It's probably here. Maybe not the author, though. Maybe not. Oh, this is a complicated pattern. It's long. I always make copies of my patterns, even in books, so that I can write on them, take notes, and mess them up to my heart's content. And it's just moose head. Mm. Just moose head is the name of the pattern. But yeah, it's in yeah, the photo taxidermy knits book. So you have to knit the. Um, you have to anyway. So 
um, it's not very hard. It's just, you know. It's just there's not a lot of repetition. It's all they're, different. It's different each time, but there kind of is some repetition oh, there sometimes. Is? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I mean, it's a stuffy, track of so. It. So, that's my moose head. We'll see if I can get it finished by next time. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think I'm going to cast on a stuffy. Like one of um, Susan Claudino's. Oh, okay. Because I really, I really want to make a stuffy. She's got some great stuffies. She has some awesome stuffies. Which one do you think you're going to do? in the mood for a stuffy. Maybe Dandy Cercephalopod. Oh. Just because that name is amazing. Yeah, that is. <laughs> like, that is the most amazing of names. Um, I want the frog. The frog? Yeah. I forgot about the frog. Is that... I think I might make another elephant. Because the elephant was really fun in it. Okay. Bugle. That was his name. Bugle, Bugle. the elephant. Oh, yeah. So cute. So. Oh, I have a new cast on. Do you? Yes. You remember back when I had the when I had that one that I was really mad at because I started it three times and I couldn't get it and I couldn't. Oh get yeah, the, the Eiffel Gold shawl. Yeah, the Eiffel Gold. Yeah. Um. Well. I cast it on. I it said, was in. It was in the timeout corner. For it a was while. really in the timeout corner. So I cast expletive, it on. Expletive, expletive, expletive. I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, and I did. And look at how look at how good this is so far. This is this is two of colorful eclectics yarns, black raspberry and I can't remember the name of the other one. Would you hold this other corner? Yes. So I've got this much done so far. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really that pretty. That is so pretty. And I really like this author because her knits are very geometric. And the designer geometric, you mean? Yeah. Um, geometric works really speak Melanie to me. Berg. Melanie Berg, yes. Yeah. Check out some of her stuff. It's really cool. So I'm through the third... I'm in the middle of the third time I'm doing the this mini stripe. I mean, it's not mini, but this mini stripe. Then I'm going to go into the bigger of this section. And then the bigger of the geometric section. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. So I figured it out. And there's a goober yep. in it. I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, I was doing my um, my slip slip knits in the wrong place. I apologize. So there's a goober in it. Should we talk about the goober? I mean, you can. Yeah, but there's a goober in it. I thought we were just going to kind of pretend that it never happened. I know, but it's nice for some people to know that even even we do goobers. Will you help me? I don't know. I haven't made a goober on this, on this scarf yet. I know. I don't always make goobers, but sometimes I do. Which is actually kind of, <laughs> kind of astonishing to me, considering how complex the lace work is. So there is a little bit of a goober, and what happened is on this row right here, this first row down here, I um, missed some of the color changes. I didn't read the pattern correctly. <gasps> you didn't read the pattern? Right. So it's a little off down you on there, but extreme. it doesn't. Sorry. But it doesn't matter. It it's fine. It doesn't look. It's not a problem. I mean, I can I can see it if I look for it, but it doesn't matter. And I went. And, oh wait, when I discovered that there was a problem, was here, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it here that I was asking you about that? No, I think it was actually up through the next stripe. I did it no, here? Sorry. No, sorry, no, no, it wasn't. I it did wasn't it right after here. I finished yeah. this. I went to him and I said, okay, there's a goober here. Do I rip all of this out to fix it, or do I live with it? And he looked at it and you said... Where? <laughs> and then he looked at it and went, yeah, there's something weird going on there, but I can't quite tell what it is. And then you said... What? What did I say? Just leave it. Well, yeah, because... Just leave it. And also, another interesting thing that happened, between here and going through this stripe to here, my gauge changed. And so this is looser. But... 
I don't think I care. We had that conversation too, and I don't care about that. So stuff happens. And this was, this was not, uh, this gauge change happened mostly because as I was doing this slip stitch pattern here, I started knitting more loosely to accommodate the slip stitches. And then I just continued that into this next section. Well, so you're doing a couple of these stripes and then it gets a lot bigger. Like there's this big section of it. Then there's this big section here. Yeah, okay. So here, let me see if Sorry, I can... Sorry, we can't quite show it to you because there's pattern on the page. Ah, there we go. So I have, I have just finished this and then I'm going to go into this section and then I'm ready for this next big um, slip stitch section. So, and I just started this last week. So, this has been my project of choice for evening knitting at this point. Mainly because I'm just so happy that I got past that part that I couldn't figure out and I found the pattern and a way to track it so that I can do it now. Yep. It's anyway, a really pretty pattern. And I just love these two colors together. This is just so pretty. So this this one is um, the dark one. This one is black raspberry. And this one I am pulling out. Uh, Gimme sorbet. That's right. That's what this color way is, is give me survey. And there's all of these different colors in it. It's so, I love working with this yarn, with this color, with this color way. And these are both her elation sock. Okay. Now is it time to show your yarn? I think it is. Alrighty then. So in addition to casting on something new and knitting my moose and finishing the color and life cowl I have been spinning and I have been really spinning so I had now these haven't been finished yet which means I haven't washed them and done any of the other finishing things but I had a bobbin of this already done and I think I showed it on the podcast a long time ago and I went, I'm going to start spinning. So I spun the rest of it and I spun up the other bobbin. Oh, this is so fun. This is Merino Tencel. And it's just gorgeous. And I just spun up the two, um, two braids. This is from Spunwear Over the Rainbow. <laughs> That's I know. good. Isn't That's that good. awesome? So she does fiber and all Spun kinds of stuff. Where over the rainbow. Okay, so this is a, I think it's a caramel, I can't remember what she called it, but caramel something. I think it was caramel latte. Anyway, it was that just pretty. That looks about right. And I just spun up, I don't know, I think I might do a curls with this one. Ooh. I don't know how much yardage there is yet or anything else, so. Um, this is pretty fine. It's this is close to a fingering or a heavy fingering. It's a two ply. Seems thinner than sock. Um, uh, in no, it's, places, in a couple of places it's thinner, but in a couple places it's thicker. But it's hand spun, so. so yeah, that's the way it goes. That's so that's what this one is. How? Then I have. Ugh, I don't know where to put all these. Then I think next net. Yeah, that's what I did. The next I spun this gorgeous beauty again these need to be finished this is neon pink lemonade by colorful eclectic and this is Pullworth and silk fiber again two braids two four ounce braids that i spun each braid and then just let them then just let them ply together as they would and you can see how it worked out and it's wonderful and it's called pink lemonade in the shade because I don't even know if you can see it but there's these just little bit blips of kind of blue and shading in it and it looks really cool 
it's just this is just so beautiful so that's what this one is and all of these are all of these that I spun are two four ounce braid braids applied together this one is a sweet Georgia yep and this is so mm. And it smells good. This is BFL. And it smells a wonderful, wonderful, clean, sheepy wool. smell. Yeah. Clean wool. That's, that's what I've noticed about BFL. BFL smells especially like wool. Yeah. It smells sheepy. Yep. That's what it is. Sheepy. Sheepy. So this is, and this is a thicker one. This is closer to a DK. And this, this, um, pink lemonade is somewhere between a heavy fingering. This is probably a sport. I would probably classify the pink lemonade as a sport. But mm. this one I would definitely say is a... Worsted or chunky. DK or light worsted. Maybe it's even worsted. I'd have to use a card. I think worsted. So, but it's not a heavy worsted for sure. No. Um, it is a heavy worsted. Slash chunky. This one chunky is a heavy places. worsted, but that's not the next one we're showing. We're showing oh, this okay. one next. This is fiber from... Gosh, I spent every single one of these is a different um, artist maker. Yeah, different, not exactly designer. Artist. Yeah, different company. This one is you can't take the sky from me. Oh, from that's retold, good. From retold yarns. That's good. We hold that one up so they can see. I like that. <laughs> and I can't. I can't oh remember. no, that's it's much more purple. It's 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 got it's got lavender mixed in with the blue. You can't see it. It's No, well, you can't see the lavender. It doesn't look like it to us. It may come out just fine. Yeah. When I'm editing and it may turn out beautifully, but it's got so much lavender and this yeah. blue. It's it's like it's like this um it's it's actually almost lavender with like hints of blue and, and I'm going lighter. to have to knit with this so. soon. Yes, especially since it's raining. Yes, it is raining. You <laughs> and might be it's able raining. to hear it. <laughs> you might be able to hear the rain uh, and the thunder. <laughs> but we're going to keep going. So <clears throat> this one's this this I love. Oh, it's I can't so pretty. remember the fiber content of it, and I don't have the band handy. Um, mm. I might put it up on the screen. Feels like it's got merino in it. Anyway. It's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. I think it has silk. This may be silk and bamboo and merino. Mm. I'll have to yeah, look I it up. Yeah, I can see that because it, 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 it feels a little bit springy. And I'll put it on, and now I'm committed to putting it on the screen. Apparently. So. Alrighty, next one. But this is You Can't Take the Sky From Me. It's very soft. This is a Mountain Colors colorway. And this turned out very chunky this goes into the chunky and this is I just this is this is BFL is this one BFL this one's BFL yeah that's BFL yeah it isn't as strong but it is definitely I think unmistakably this is BFL. BFL so um if I'm wrong about any things I say I'll look up the bands and if I'm wrong I'll put the stuff on the screen so that's about it. Yeah. That I've got. So let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five skeins of yarn that I spun. You've been a busy little bee. I have been a busy little beaver. And these are, I mean, this was, th that's five, that's 10 braids. So I have used, I'm very proud. I have used 10 braids. None of these were bought new. Oh, not true. The you can't take this guy from me was bought in the last five months. As in five months ago, or because in the last five months is a very broad time spectrum. I can't remember exactly when I bought it. I'm giving five months because I've had it for a little while, but not that long. So I think it kind of count. It doesn't quite count as. I don't think that one quite counts as stash stash spinning but the rest of these were so four out of the five were 
were deep stash spinning. Yeah, I remember you've had that one for a while. That was, a, this, that was a yarn club. Yeah, this was part of the fiber club that Sweet Georgia did. So, I'm really excited to figure out things to knit with these. This, I don't know what this is going to be. But it needs to be, all of these things need to be something. Should so. make another fisherman's rib pattern. Because fisherman, fisherman's rib is fun. Oh, you mean another pattern using that, a different pattern than the cow? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. We'll see. Alrighty, so that's all the yarn. And I think that's all the show and tell. Is that all our show and tell? Yep. That's all our show and tell for this time. Alrighty. Uh, on to giveaways. Giveaway. All right. If you are a maker and ever want to donate to one of our giveaways, um, we are more than happy to do that. Just private message me on Instagram or Ravelry, and I'm happy to connect with you and figure out what you like to do. We'd love to give something of yours away. We love having makers, and we love um, doing that. And this month... Who won? It and is... And what did they win? The giveaway was this set of Ann Tudor stitch markers. The adorable little sheepies. The adorable little sheepies. I love wearing them. I use her stuff and I put it in as earrings. And I love wearing it as earrings. I get the crochet clasp um, on the stitch markers and then I can use them as either stitch markers or earrings. It's fantastic. So the winner is, because all of you are like, woo one! <laughs> Vshaw7, right? Yeah. And the prompt was, what festival would you like to go to? Um, that you could go and she would like to go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. That's when I would really like to go to. Mo not just for the yarn, but just because I would love to go see Edinburgh. Mm. And I know I'm probably saying that wrong. And we're just gonna build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> Getting over it with Bennett Potty. Um. <laughs> All right. Oh, our new giveaway. Do we have a question for our new giveaway? Um. Uh, well, I don't know. Okay, so this was, um, this is one of these little bags. And we've got two skeins of this imperial yarn. And no, I didn't skein it up. It actually came this way. It actually came, I mean, I didn't cake, cake it, up. it up. It came in cakes. And this is Native Twist Soft Spun Single um, Charcoal... What is the content? 100% wool. And this is the pattern that it comes with to make this. Um, to make that, you can use this yarn to make that pattern. Sorry, if Gosh, you can hear the rain, all... it's picking up outside. So. Yeah, it is. I hope it's not too loud for you guys. Well, then you get a podcast in a rainstorm. Get to hear a podcast in a rainstorm. Alrighty. But we desperately need this rain. <laughs> yeah, we really do. Alrighty. So this is our new giveaway. Do we, what's our prompt? Um, I, I don't know. What is your favorite thing about community? Or what do you want most? What do you want most? Out of a community. What do you want most out of a community? What do you look for in a community? What's the most important quality of community? Just, and you, you could do your thoughts on community or whatever. So, that works. This prompt will make sense in just, in just a minute. Because guess what our conversation is about? All right, time for our conversation. About? Well, last time we talked about Fear of missing out, FOMO, and um, community, social places, stuff like that. And that's where the giveaway prompt came from for what festival would you like to go to even if you can't. 
Mm -hmm. And there is, there are so many creative ways that people are coming up with community. Now, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about community because that's Creative ways to come up with creative communities even. There you go. Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, and because we have communities, I mean, there is the fiber community, but not everybody can be, not everybody is able to go to yarn festivals or able to go to, um, knitting events or able even to go to knit nights. I mean, there are a lot of people that live really far away from, you know, their local yarn store is an hour or more away. So that's a lot to do to go for a knit night. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. But we want to be part of knitting communities. Yeah. Our local yarn store. We wanted to be we want to be part of knitting communities. We want to be part of all of that kind of stuff, but you know, sometimes we just live really stinking far away. Um and so it's hard to be part of communities. It's hard to find communities. Um and I wanted to do the podcast and podcasting bridges that gap a little bit by doing it because we can talk to you, we can share with you and then we can get your feedback via um, Instagram or Ravelry or whatever, the website, direct messages and stuff like that. But it's still, it's not live. No. And a lot of podcasters have gone to a live format mm -hmm. where they'll podcast live. And so you can, you know, if you're around when the podcast happens, when they're recording it, then you can participate in it. And those can be fun. They're a little bit challenging sometimes, I think, because if you try to watch them afterwards, I think there's a negative that you kind of feel like you missed out. So it almost kind of creates, it can create a fear of missing out because you weren't able to be there and ask the questions. And that's one way that people do it to try to get more of a live interaction connection. Um, but one of the things that I found, and this is kind of a share, but it's also a conversation. Do you have anything to say at this point before I say the next part? No. Um, and it can be really isolating too, if you're by yourself or if you have problems getting out or you have to depend on other people to get you places. Um, but what, like you, me, <laughs> like you right now, although you we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, I lost where I was. Oh, so one of the things I have started getting pretty involved with, um, and I've talked about it before, but I'm more involved with it now, is on, is live, needing video chat rooms. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. It's, you take, it's on a, it's on the meeting platform, Zoom. And the room that I spend the most time in is Yarns Around the World. They have a website, yatw.org. And I am involved helping out and with, uh, with the administrative stuff. And it's nice because you can go into the Zoom room and you can chat. And so what we wanted to start doing is setting kind of a time that you and I would be in the Zoom room after our podcast goes live. Mm -hmm. So that people could join in and do that, but would still have the conversation here for those of you who can't join in the zoom room this is for like an additional yeah we, we would continue the conversation it would be conversation continued yes exactly um but then there are other times when i would just i'm in there at least once a day oh yeah at least once a day and so not 
people are not always in the room all the time. So if you go in and it's empty, don't panic. There's also information on the website on how to get um, signed up with the group me chat mm -hmm. so that you can, so that you can chat outside and say, Hey, I'm going in the room now and chat back and forth. Cool. Um, is, is there going to be, um, how to get into the zoom room? Yes. In the all of that information is on YTW.org. I will put the number on the screen and I will also put it in the description box. The number is 411-555-1212. We changed it to be really easy to remember because <laughs> I put it up on the screen before <laughs> and we changed the number. Um, Robert and I changed the number to be easier to remember. Hmm. Robert Lawrence also does it with me, um, the administrative stuff of the room. Uh, and we have, we have, the website is pretty slick. It looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it has, we, we are working on doing theme days so that we have a spinning day so that as we go in that the primary conversation is about spinning or the primary conversation can be about weaving. You can talk about anything you want. Um, there are community guidelines on the website and everything else so you understand the context that we're holding for this community on this virtual platform. Mm -hmm. And I am really excited. So now that I've introduced that concept and whatever it is, I want to talk about the I want to talk about virtual communities and how they're helpful or not the advantages, pros and cons of virtual communities. Yeah. Do you have some thoughts? Um, well, yes, but not yet. Okay. So he's formulating his thoughts. So for me, one of the advantages is I can get on while I'm walking in the morning, while I'm doing my walking on my treadmill and talk to people. And that helps keep me motivated walking um, and talk to people who have a similar, have a similar language and a similar vocabulary about at least one thing that I'm interested in. So I can talk to them about dying or, you know, we can ask each other questions and just kind of chat. Yeah. And I think that's really how communities form. It's like grain nucleation. Grain nucleation? Yeah. Okay help. <laughs> so when you have a metal um, and you heat it up to about a quarter of its melting temperature, or sorry, uh, 0.4 of its melting temperature, so 40% of its melting temperature, you get up to there and um, it starts to recrystallize, which means um, that the atoms start rearranging themselves and um, taking out imperfections and, and forming grains, which are regions of crystallinity. So it's nice and ordered in this little region. And then over here, it's nice and ordered in this little region, but there's a boundary between them where it's kind of disjointed. Um, and the way that the grains form is they nucleate around an inhomogeneity. Um, sorry, an inhomogeneity. There we go. It's a hard word. Okay. <laughs> it's a hard word to say. Um, so they they form around this uh, impurity, um, and it could be anything. It could be like a little couple of other atoms that aren't of the material, but they form around that, um, and then it grows. Um, and I like to think that that's how communities happen. They start around something, and then all the atoms around them kind of get roped in. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. We have kind of a little, some little grains going. We've got, what is, what is it that they go? I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so we've got some little things 
that our community can form around, especially this particular community. Is what it's called. Especially this particular community, <laughs> the Yarns Around the World community. And we'd really love to have it grow. And and John Michael and I would really love to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly when we're going to be on after this is posted. We'll figure it out and it will be on the screen. And we'll set a time, a, at least a two hour to three hour window when we'll be around and available on Zoom and you can chat with us live and ask us questions and say, hey, how are you doing? And you could have actual live interaction with us. Because that's Im that's important too. Mm -hmm. You can have lots of writing conversation and stuff, but sometimes kind of the next step is to talk to people. Yep. That's one of the reasons I like the to have the company while I'm walking is, you know, I there's no way that I'm going to be able to have a walking group up where we live that I could go walking with people because sometimes people do that and they meet at a place and they go walking through a park. Well, that's great if it only takes you five minutes to get to where that is. <laughs> or you could just go walking in our land. Yeah, exactly. By myself. But sometimes it's nice to have company to do that. There are birds. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Snow White. <laughs> I don't know, your lips are looking pretty red right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm finished with that. And we, we don't go into that show. Okay. <laughs> oh. So. It's rough. You're not, all right. You're not Cinderella either. Cinderella no, had a thing with I'm birds not, too. Did she? Yeah. They were, they were in doing or sewing with her. Do you oh, remember? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I just re I mostly remember the mice from some Cinderella. Oh yeah, the mice the mice were pretty and, good, but yeah. but the but the birds flew in, you know, and, and hung out with her. Okay. Anyway, none of that's me. <laughs> so, but it's nice to do that, and I, I walk on a treadmill. It's how I walk. Sometimes I go out and walk in the woods, but mostly I walk on a treadmill. Um. And then she walks in her game, too. Yes. There's that. <laughs> John Michael's trying to figure out it's a way really to... just so she can do, play her game. <laughs> it really is. I have a rule. <laughs> is it time for True Confessions? It is. It okay. is. I play World of Warcraft. I really like World of Warcraft. I have lots of characters, two realms. I've got a guild in a... A horde guild and a... Okay, so if you really like playing World of Warcraft, PM PM, I'll tell you which realms I'm on. <laughs> and maybe we can get together and play in World of Warcraft too. Another community. Another community. <laughs> see see and, and there and there the inhomogeneity was World of Warcraft and yeah. now all of you are accumulating okay. around it. So anyway, that's where I'm that's what I play. But my rule is I can only play World of Warcraft if I'm walking on the treadmill. I have it all set up so I have the screen and everything. And you're going to build me a better desk. Yes? Yes, Mother, I'm absolutely going to build you a better desk. Yes, Mother, I'm absolutely going to build you a better desk. That is the right answer. Okay, so. <laughs> um, World of Warcraft, but my rule is I can only play World of Warcraft while I'm walking. So, I walk. Some days I walk more than others, depending on how the how quest, long her quest chain is, is going. And, and, well, you know, they have them right next to each other, and then this one leads to this one, and then I'm in this area. And I'll this just zone, do another quest. Wanna, exactly. And there, it works for her, and see? It does, because then it's like, okay, I'm, I've got, I've got to work, or I've got to walk, and then it's like, oh, well, but I'm only three minutes away from the next round number, right? Or I'm three minutes away from a five or th in time, you know, so I'm, yeah, I'm just a few minutes away from an hour. So then I'll walk till an hour, but then I'm in the middle of this other quest chain or this middle of this thing. And then, oh, but I'm almost at 70 minutes. So I'll just walk a few more minutes. And then I'm anyway, so it's a so, self perpetuating thing that helps me walk longer. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to see, speaking of virtual communities, um, how communities form around virtual things. Yeah. Like, um, and, you know, some people write this off, but I really think they shouldn't. 
the volume of community that is formed around um, like specific video games, like Minecraft is probably the biggest one, um, I would think. But also, more recently, there's there's some um, there's some other uh, what they're called battle royale games um, that have been forming, and 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 they form communities of people who get together and they play, and then they and they hang out, and and you get to know people from all around the world. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about the knitting and the virtual thing is, it's this particular room is open all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the advantages. So if you're in Europe or Australia or wherever, um, yeah, a lot of us in the U.S. are going to be asleep, but <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Some or of not. Us, some of us some, keep some odd hours Some of sometimes. us might be up knitting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and watching um, whatever it was, Lost in Space. Oh, <laughs> I'm so mad at that show. But anyway, uh. so... It's just a, it's just an interesting, it's an interesting thing. Now, a downside of the virtual community is, or a downside of this particular kind of room, and that's one of the things we've tried to mitigate with the group chat, is you can't tell. It's not always, there's, it's like pop in and nobody's there. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you know when somebody's going to be in the room so you, so it's worth more or less, going in. So there'll be somebody there and available. Which is why communities have events. That's right. Which is why <laughs> communities have events. And which is why we're setting up a specific time event for us to be there. And talk about it. And just talk. And also, and also the group me chat. That's what I was saying. Not just events, but there's that group me chat that you can go in and talk back and forth. And so say somebody's at work and they can Okay, maybe that's a bad example. Maybe you're at your... Maybe you're grocery shopping. Grocery shopping. Yes, I log in a lot when I'm grocery shopping. Um, but I meant maybe you're like at somebody's... I don't know. There's no way to make this sound a boring event for you. I'm not going to say what kind or anything <laughs> else. Maybe you're at some event. No, I'm curious now. What is your boring, boring event? <laughs> I'm curious now. <laughs> it's different for everybody. What, what is yours, though? I'm curious. The example I was going to... No, I'm not going to give a good because it's just... No. <laughs> so. Do it and you're cool. Do it and you're cool. Do it. <laughs> I am my own person. I can handle being uncool. All right. <laughs> But be a joiner for us. <laughs> for YITW. Anyway. But there's there are some disadvantages with the virtual communities. Because, um, especially in this particular platform. Uh, because you don't necessarily always know when anybody's going to be there. Yeah. So, just try. Or send, send me a message. Now, consider I'm in the mountain time zone. So, if you send me a message at 3 a.m., my time, you may not get a very quick response. But I do try to say in the group me chat when I'm going to be on. Yeah. And if there was a specific time you guys wanted to meet with me or chat with me or whatever, we could arrange that. So, you could talk with me live and in person that way. And or John Michael. Live and in person? Okay. Virtual person. <laughs> you could talk to me live. <laughs> and it is a little not, different. That's not quite the same thing. <laughs> it is a little different because you don't have the touch of in person. You can't yeah. feel the yarn. Sometimes colors come across a little odd. Sometimes there's connectivity issues. But I think it's... I think it's a a better format than I think it's an interesting format and I want to explore it. I backed off from better there. And if you if you want to use it as a knitting helpline, a lot of people there know what they're doing. Oh yeah, totally you can use it for a knitting helpline. You can totally come in and say, I have even hey, used it. I need help. And and there's that is a brilliant point. 
because there's lots of times, even me, I'll go in and I'll be like, okay, I just need to talk this out loud to people who understand the language I'm using to make sure that I'm on the right track, to make sure that I've got it. It's just nice to brainstorm mm -hmm. with other people about a project or about a problem or about a solution or about a whatever you're encountering. Like, like that Eiffel Gold. There was this problem. There was this thing. I was sitting here going, okay, I could leave it. Well, maybe it's worse than I think. Maybe I'm just saying I want to leave it because I don't want to rip all of that out. But maybe I really do. I happen to live with somebody that I can go to. And he's home all the time now. Yeah. So, <laughs> during the summer. So, I can go and say, hey, look at this. Is this, um, you know, where... Am I on the right page? But I could also show it on the VKN and get their input. So it's really valuable. Which, when she doesn't like my input, she goes to them. No, that's not true. When have I done that? Um, several times on like color when? decisions that I have made. Okay, color decisions are different. Are they? Yes. Are they? Yes. Because you have some weird... Never mind. We're not going to go there. <laughs> Alrighty. Apparently, I have weird taste in color. So, you just sometimes... Never mind. Okay. <laughs> so... Because yeah, they could see the colors better over your camera. Anyway. Community can be a good thing. It can. It can also be an irritating <laughs> thing. <laughs> she says, pointing at me. Anyway. So, that's our... Thing about community. What questions do we have for our viewers? Um, what, do we have anything are... else? Do you have any other thoughts? Mm -mm. About creating a community? I really want to be a part of a community and have a community where people can come in and everybody's adults and we can have conversations and we can have challenging conversations and not everybody has to agree but nobody has to be Nobody has to be wrong. No. People can even be wrong. <laughs> But nobody has to be condemned. Mm. Yeah. We can disagree without condemnation. Which is challenging. Sometimes. For people. Anyway. Um, any other so thoughts? So yeah, what, um, what communities are you a part of? That's a good question. What are your favorite communities? Yes. What are your favorite communities, and what communities are you Where a part of? Where do you of? commune? <laughs> How about where are your communities? <laughs> did we ask that question already? We did, kind of. <laughs> we did, kind of. That's, that's that the question. verb form of community, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared I'm pretty now. Sure. <laughs> I think we should... Pretty sure that's the verb form of community. I think we should not venture farther <laughs> into that zone. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so now it's time for... Now we have a special section this week. We do. It's a review section. Oh, wait. Did we have? Did we finish everything with our questions? Yep. For We don't have any questions from our viewers. But right now we do have a review to do. We so do. let's head into our review. So this is um All right, so wait, let me what? let me oh. give some context for it. So, Cece Almond and Dami Almond of the Geeky Girls put out a call for anybody There's, there's no D. What? It's Almond Almond. Oh, sorry. They are not nuts. <laughs> I'm going to try that again. <laughs> because I really don't know that I want that but, on there. But what about my nuts joke? That was good. That was, that was comedy gold. <laughs> All right. So, no, they're not nuts. Almond. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, ladies. So, they put out a call for any podcasters that wanted to review their new book, which is called Tickled Pink. And I said, done. We would love to. And so we've got that to talk to you. So they sent us a copy of the book and we're going to, yeah, we're going to kind of look at it right now. So, um, I really like, I looked through it earlier. I really like it. 
um, the pattern, there, there's some really cool patterns, and it seems well written, and they're cats. They're so, cats. I mean, that's a plus. There are cats. That is and just... they're adorable cats. It's really cute. They've got yarn they're, holding they're, and they're knitting They're adorable kitties. little knitting cats. So, the, um, which one did you like best? Oh, uh, let's see. There um, are eight patterns. I really like... One, two, three, I four... I really like that one. Five, six, and then also seven, that one. Eight. Yeah, there are eight patterns in here. So you get eight patterns, and there are some variations that you can do. Some of the patterns have a couple of variations. And you like these, these socks, um, you can knit them top down or toe up. There's two patterns. Right. She does directions for both mm -hmm. ways. It's really cool. Um, the bashful striped shawl you liked. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And then I like that one because I thought, oh, that could be really useful in using even more colors. I could adapt it to use different colors so it doesn't just have two colors in it. It's not following to the pattern, use a, though. It's I know not that. following the pattern. I know that, but I can, I can do different things. Mm -hmm. So follow just the stripe sections, but then do a different color pattern for me that uses up kind of sock yarn. I think that one's for sock yarn. Yeah, you can bite into your box collage. Right. Some of the bigger... Have we talked Pieces about the box collage yet? We have talked about the box okay. collage before. Yeah, so... It is fingering weight. 200 grams gains. So it needs about 200 grams. But I have lots of colors that I could add up to 200 grams. And then also the... Um... What was the other one? The other shawl in there. The other shawl that's in there. I love this cowl, though. This Alba cowl. Mm, yeah. I really like that one. It's very pretty. So, yeah, and then there's another... There's there's a couple of shawls, and there's a couple of socks, and then there's a couple of hats. Um, and it's all really pretty. And there's several sock patterns, and again, they're toe up and top down. That one. Yep, that one. I love that the one. The sea and sky wrap. Mm-hmm. It's very... It's... it's, it's it's got a lovely patterning in it. So it's really great. And here's one of the things that I like best about this book. It's an ebook. And one of the things I actually like best about this book is you, in Ravelry, once you download it, each of the patterns are separate PDFs. Oh. Yeah. It's really cool. So when you go That's to your nifty. Ravelry, you don't have to print off. I can just pull up this sea and sky wrap. Yeah, you, and you, you realize be able to that print with just that sea and can, sky wrap. You can hit Control Print and right. then select the and pages. And select the pages. But the way it's downloaded, and the way it's the way it's broken up, I don't have to. I don't even have to think about it. Well, I can see, just go to the individual. I see that as a slight disadvantage to like browsing through the book. You get both. And, uh, oh, okay. You get both. You get oh, the okay. entire PDF in the book. That's what we're looking at so right now. So that's perfect. And then each, once I decide, oh, I want this C and Skyrap, I can just go to Ravelry that's and perfect. print C and Skyrap. Yep. Well done. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I really love that. And the difficulty level is nice that they assess a difficulty level to yep. it. The, it's the number of hearts. Are... Yeah. In, in Increased hearts increase, in, indicates increased joy in knitting the pattern <laughs> <laughs> increase love increase commitment <laughs> an increase of something <laughs> you'll love it call that it much what you more. will <laughs> yeah assess it how you will i love that pattern for those socks this this one is yeah. the let me go back up through it thistle in bloom socks hmm so, you realize you are looking at pictures that they cannot see. Yes, I understand. I might put pictures on the screen mm. from each of these as we're talking about them. All righty then. Is there anything else you would like to say about this lovely book? No. And they and they are modeling their shawls in yep. the and. Yep, the, and it's adorable. It is. It's really great. And there's cats. So it's well set up. It's a nice, um, 
format. It's formatted nicely. It's easy to read. What? You're staring at the book. Oh, that's right. I need to look up here <laughs> while I'm talking. And it even has the glossary. So, well done. We just we just opened up just to check. We opened up one of the patterns. Um, because kind of a downside would be if you print off this one pattern and then you had to go back to the other thing to get all of the definitions and the and the glossary information. But you don't. But you don't. They have included all of the definitions and all the glossary things in the pattern. So, so we it just is well edited. Yeah. We looked at I found pearls in the seaweed socks and it is a chem and that is a complete pattern for I found pearls in the seaweed. Um, with the with all the sizing and the pattern notes and the um, abbreviations and everything. So well done. Very, very well done. Yep. So check it out. It's a really great book. Yeah, it is a very great book with and lots of fun patterns. I think that's it. I think that's it. So until next time, have a colorful life. Are you ready? Are you ready to rumble? Welcome to the Color and Life Party. <laughs> that is your fault. How so? <laughs> the abruptness of that transition was too much. I was sanding yesterday. And a splinter went through the sandpaper into my finger. That's yucky. Yep, right in. Boop. Didn't go very far in, but it still hurts every time I touch it. That's what I should do. What? I should learn to crochet so that I can crochet little animals. The amigurumi stuff, yeah. that book, you, we got. You need to do that. Yeah. You need to learn how to crochet. Apparently. <laughs>